everybody, Aaron here. Today, I'm so excited to share with you my latest commissioned model, which is a more than two foot tall replica of the Scottish Rite Masonic Eagle with two heads and a crown and a pedestal. So there's a lot of components to this piece, lots of textures and techniques that I'd love to talk more about. So without further ado, let's get right into that. In terms of the overall composition, this piece represents a fusion of the original logo with my own interpretive and sometimes structurally necessary revisions. While the eagle and sword and banner and crown are all parts of the original emblem, I made the decision to add onto this model a marble style plinth, which is there for a number of reasons. One, to give the piece an even greater presence and height, and two, and more importantly, to provide it with an anchor and a structural foundation to allow the rest of the model to float freely in space. As you can see, the piece is really supported just by these two Technic columns, which are anchored inside of the pedestal and go all the way up into the eagle to lend the model that stability. I'm using a bunch of different colors on this model, even though there's a lot of, say, gray and white. There's also three different shades of yellow, if you count the yellow of the banner and heraldry, which is different than the yellow of the eagle's beak, as well as the yellow gold of the crown. I did add in a few places as well some more realistic coloration to break up the uniformity of the model. For instance, some tan in the eagle's eyes or black for the talons. But generally speaking, the colors used here are pretty much in line with the original logo design that I was sent. This model actually includes four Lego built fonts of different techniques and different styles. The G down here in the compass and square is a three dimensional popping out, while the Freemasons text along the banner is made out of a lot of round corner tiles or dots to be able to create that in a more two dimensional way. Here in the triangle, the 32 or 33, are made using a uh, fusion technique that I had to invent to fit within the confines of this equilateral triangle. And then, of course, here around the base, we also have a more traditional or oft-explored Lego font for the slogan that my clients requested. It was important that the base not uh, upstage the rest of the model to me, so that's one of the reasons why it's gray. But I did still want to give it a really regal and traditional texture. I'm using almost 300 of these one-by-one -one curved double bow slopes. And on top of the pedestal, of course, I've got a really nice, flat, smooth surface to offset the studs out texture that is dominant across the rest of the eagle. Speaking of the eagle's texture, it was a really fun challenge to find a way to create sort of a feathered look on this model, beyond just having the studs out texture, which creates a fuzzy or furry look, which I've used on some of my works in the past. I also included some plates modified with teeth on them to create some sharper shapes, slopes, especially up here in the rough, so to speak, of the eagle. And then I have used some corner round dot tiles to just add some sharp feather-like edges along the body. The most interesting layering and texturing challenge, of course, though, was the wings. Beyond having these splayed fingers, which was its own challenge, I also wanted to give the wings a sense of multiple different sizes of feathers and layers of feathers. So aside from the long ones here at the bottom, we also have another layer of interstitial feathers and some finer downy feathers right in the, in the crook of the wing. Building out those textures was really fun and one of my uh, favorite parts of the model is the wings. So I feel pretty good about how those turned out. Some of my favorite parts of this build are the objects that are existing in relation to the eagle, especially the sword and the crown. The sword is clad in uh, metallic silver, which is a fairly rare Lego color, but I thought it was perfect to use for this. Although the front of the sword does look like a blade, in reality, this whole thing is actually quite robust. The reason that the sword is so robust is because it has to serve a really important structural role, which is going between the talons and the banner and being able to hold those things up. So I had to make sure the sword wouldn't bend, flex, or break, and that it could hold all of that weight. The crown, conversely, is designed to be rather light so that it can really hover in space or create the illusion of hovering in space. Considering on the logo, you know, it's just printed above the eagles. There's, there's no 
<laughs> There's no problem making something float in two dimensions. The technique used to make the roundness of the crown is one that I stole from some Lego sets. And then, of course, I'm using a bunch of miscellaneous plates to create the bowing ornamentation. I really like how these two objects look. They really ground the eagle and give it a sense of pseudo-realism as well. As a matter of fact, I designed this whole piece to be quite modular, so the whole eagle can lift up off of the pedestal. The eagle itself comes apart in large chunks, too. Uh, the reason that I built it this way is because this is a showpiece. My clients wanted to be able to bring it to a bunch of different locations, so I wanted to make sure that it, you know, it could come apart in chunks to allow it to ship a bit more safely. I better build this back together now, huh? <laughs> Let's do that. Ta-da! That wasn't so hard, was it? However, some other parts of the design are modular for another reason and removable for another reason. If I take off the crown and I also take off this front chest triangle, I can replace the number 33 with a number 32. And this version of the eagle with no crown and with the number 32 actually represents a different level within the Masonic organization. That was an important detail that my client wanted to include and I was more than happy to facilitate within this model as well, that interchangeability. Personally, I love it with the crown. I think it looks even more regal and even more awesome, but this version also looks pretty cool, I must say. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed getting to learn more about this piece. If you want to find out even more about it, you can find a blog entry about this build on my website, AaronBrickDesigner.com, where you'll also find all kinds of other works of mine, in-depth analyses, and more. So I hope you go and check it out. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Uh -huh.